The Eagle Star of Altair is the brightest star in the constellation of Aquila and the 12th brightest star in our night sky. Altair usually outshines the variable Aldebaran in Taurus, Antares in Scorpius and Spico in Virgo. One of four A-type main sequence stars in our local vicinity, the star is hurtling towards us. Hi everyone, Vega here and in today's video we take a trip to the Aquila constellation and focus on the jewel in its crown, the beautiful star of Altair. So, let's get to it. With an apparent visual magnitude of plus 0.77, Altair is one of the vertices of the Summer Triangle Asterism, with the other two marked by white supergiant Deneb and fellow A-class main sequence star Vega. Located at a distance of 16.7 light years from the Sun, Altair is currently in the G Cloud, a nearby interstellar cloud, and an accumulation of gas and dust. Interestingly, this G cloud is located next to the local interstellar cloud, nicknamed the local fluff, through which our solar system is currently moving. Our sun is believed to be either embedded in the local fluff, or in the area which is interacting with the G cloud, and indeed it is moving in the direction of that G cloud, and then of course, Altair. Altair is quite a strange star, and it rotates extremely rapidly, with a velocity at the equator of approximately 286 kilometers a second. Incredibly, this is a significant fraction of the star's estimated breakup speed of around 400 km a second. Altair's day then, or the time in which it takes to make one rotation, is completed in less than 8 hours. For comparison, the equator of the Sun makes a complete rotation in little more than 25 days, so Altair's rotation is more similar to, and indeed slightly faster than, those of Jupiter and Saturn, but obviously it's a much larger entity than either planet. Indeed, the star's core rotates at about 50% faster than the envelope that surrounds it, although that surface differential rotation never exceeds 6%. The traditional name Altair has been used since medieval times and is an abbreviation of the Arabic phrase Al-Nisa Altair, the flying eagle, although perhaps some of our channel's Arabic speakers might like to correct my admittedly amateur pronunciation. To find Altair in the night sky, we must first locate the plough asterism in Ursa Major, and then we look above and to the left to see the distinct stars of the Summer Triangle. Altair is the leftmost star in that Summer Triangle asterism. Of the three stars that make up the Summer Triangle, Altair is physically the dimmest. Altair also forms the well-known line of stars sometimes referred to as the family of Aquila, or shaft of Aquila. Altair itself is distinctive because of two dimmer stars that appear to sit on either side of it. Second magnitude Tarazed, or Gamma Alkile, to the north-northwest, an almost fourth magnitude, Al Shane, or Beta Achille to the south southeast. Blazing away at magnitude 0.8, Altair easily outshines both of them, as we see in this depiction. In this interesting photo, we see the ISS passing through the shaft with Achille, Tarazed, and Al Shin. So we know that Altair is a Type A main sequence star, and I like to think that there is a prominent quartet of this type of star in the sky. Altair alongside Vega, Sirius, and the Eye of Sauron star of Fommelhout. Here we see the four stars together with their approximate sizes relative to the Sun. With a stellar classification of A7 main sequence, Altair however is on the smaller side of the A-type. Vega A0, Sirius A0 and Fommelhout A3 are all intrinsically brighter stars. Altair is about 1.8 times the mass of the Sun and this makes it 11 times more luminous. For reference sake, Altair would shine at approximately the same brightness as our Sun if it were at the centre of our solar system, at some 500 million kilometres distance, or 3.34 astronomical units, which would lie approximately two-thirds the distance of the giant planet of Jupiter, which would likely make the Galilean moons of Europa, Ganymede, Callisto and Io warm enough to possibly have liquid water on their surfaces, although they would remain substantially colder than Earth is now more perhaps like a slightly warmer Mars-type scenario. Altair would also certainly pose a strange object in the sky, as the equatorial radius of the star is estimated to be 2.03 solar radii, in contrast to the polar radius of 1.63, which is a 25% increase of the stellar radius from pole to equator, and what this means is the star is somewhat egg-shaped. Theory predicts that, owing to Altair's rapid rotation, its surface gravity and effective temperature should actually be lower at the equator, making the equator less luminous than the poles. This phenomenon, known as gravity darkening, or the von Zeipel effect, was confirmed for Altair in 2001. 
Altair, however, is thought to be a young star close to the zero age of main sequence at only about 100 million years old, so the chances of life in the system are close to zero. Indeed, Altair is one of few stars for which a direct image has been obtained in 2006 and 2007, and we see this here in this incredible image. Continuing on the theme of the quartet, in this graphic we see the approximate location and declination, or how high or low each star is in the sky, of all the local A-class stars. Altair is the second closest after Sirius, as you can see, with a declination of plus 0.8 degrees. It more or less hugs the Earth's equator. With a BV colour index of plus 0.22, Altair is quite a lot more yellow coloured than the other four as we see here. Fommelhout is also slightly yellowish, at plus 0.09, while Vega is a perfect white, and indeed Sirius is slightly blue at minus 0.03. The lower the number, the more blue a star is, and the higher the number, the more yellow. Another interesting fact about the Eagle star is that with a negative radial velocity of minus 26, Altair is fast approaching us, and although unfortunately at this point, I've scoured the internet, but I can't seem to find any data regarding its perihelion, or when it makes its closest approach to our solar system. That said, what we can say for certain is that the Eagle Star will slowly be brightening in our skies for some time to come. When we look at Altair through a powerful telescope, the bright star does appear to have several faint visual companion stars. Unfortunately, however, all are much more distant than Altair and are not physically associated. Altair is the 12th brightest star in the night sky, and one of a group of four very prominent A-class main sequence stars in our local neighbourhood. A very fast spin means that the star is oblate in shape, and it's one of only a few stars that actually have its disk photographed. If Altair were at the centre of our solar system, it would heat up the Jovian moons, and the star is actually moving quickly towards our Earth. Part of the Summer Triangle, Altair is a very, very slightly yellow, tinged white twinkle in our night skies. The Eagle Star has spread its wings and it has our solar system in its sights. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and it could be your idea next week that shows up. Take really good care of yourselves, look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.